Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna have some issues with doing the game catcher. So, let's move the game capture. And let's go display capture. level folder which is content all right and bring this back down here put it down so highest level folder which is content I'm gonna create a new folder I'm gonna call this rock ball Inside this folder, what we're going to do is we're going to right click, create a couple folders. First one we're going to call portal. Second one we're going to call gate. Third one is going to be called HUD. Fourth one is going to be called Accelerator. And what I'm pulling these out of, by the way, is the document I wrote up in the email to you guys if you want. Okay. Wow. 
I just have edge stacks to do whatever wrong. Is we have our core mechanics. Right? And what we're going to do is we're also going to gun spawner. Not a gun spawner, a uh, rocket spawner. Break. And a target. Rockets bomb. Break. Target. Now, what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to focus on is the All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by creating a material. And this we're going to call M underscore portal master. All right. I'm going to open up that material. We're going to do material domain. Is going to be surface. Blend mode is going to be additive. And what we're going to do this is the unlit material. The rest of it we can ignore. We're going to start out by creating constant free vector. We're going to convert that to parameter. Control C, Control B. We're going to want at least two of those. And the first one we're going to call inner Fresno color. The bottom one we're going to call outer Fresno color. Okay. Take these, we're going to move. Here. We're going to zoom out a little bit. Now we're going to be making two Fresnels. Alright. And let's see. I'm going to go into the previous material I made. We're going to go into the previous material I made in Rocket Ball. So we're going to go over in Rocket Ball to go under that assets. And we want to look at material very odd line. So looks like yep. We have a parameter for the first one, 4.5. And you know, this is all the stuff. So we're going to just copy this and paste it in. Delete, paste. Move this over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into the opacity mask, and this should give us a nice, should give us a nice blue color. Oh, emissive color, not opacity. Well, is that not opacity? There we go. Give us a nice blue glowing color. So what we're going to do is gotta love Twitter notification. So right here we have what we call the inner fresno. So the inner fresno is this gradient color you see here. Alright. What it looks like without the inner fresno is this. Alright. Just that outer circle. 
inner is that inner level. And without the outer, it's kind of weird, don't Now, you could plug, say, a straight blue color, but you see how it looks on around the edges. You kind of want to have that present to uh, even it out, make it softer, let it uh, fade into the dark. Alright, so what we're doing is we're doing 0.1 for the exponent into the Fresnel. Then out from that we are doing a 1 minus, which basically flips it in reverse. Multiplying that by the inner Fresnel color, multiplying that by an intensity, which is 100. I can show you what that looks like if we pop that up to, say, 200. You see, you have a much greater glow from the inside. For now, I'm not really wanting that, so we're going to leave that down. On the outer Fresnel, we're saying that we want it to be further out, where it's coming in. I can adjust that forever and say, you can see what happens. I mean, go and do this yourself, play around with it, but you just kind of throw it on the and we're going to multiply that by 2. Now if we wanted to, we could say 1. You know, it kind of makes a more distinct difference than that. But we're going to multiply that by 2. And then this right here is the light mass intensity multiple for the flyer. Okay. So the real time, we're going to pull right out of the multiply. And we're going to put the output from this intensity to the light mass. Replace intensity. This comes from the addition of both presence here. And we're going to output that into a missing code. Now this is all well good, except for we've got a presence and then an outlet those are parameters. Now what you're going to find is that if I take Close this window. Close here. Alright, if we take this, right click on it and create a material instance, we're going to call this material instance red, and we're going to make a secondary one, m underscore inst underscore blue I'm going to go into here for material and some thread we're going to change the Fresno outer color to red color you can definitely see what's going on there and then we're going to change the Fresno inner color to another red color as well it'll be a slightly darker one Okay, on that. Hit save, close it out, and we have our material instance red. We have our material instance blue, which we don't have to change anything with. We're going to click save all. What we're going to do next is we're going to create a folder, and we're going to call this materials. select all three of those, we're going to move them into materials. And here we're going to create a blueprint class of type actor. It can be placed or spawned in the world. So the portal is going to be spawned into the world after we end up hitting something. So we're going to go in here and we're going to call this BP portal. Leave it alone for a second while I do a do another double check. Alright, so we can close this material blue. Alright, 
red portal, and blue portal. Right. Perfect. So we're going to go back to Rock Mall. Hit F2. Blue print. Red. Blue portal. And we're going to red click. Actually, we're not going to create the blue portal blueprint yet. We're going to BP red portal. to go to the rocket ball and open up the BP Red Portal. Now this one I'm going to go through a little bit better. But right now we're going to go into the viewport and we have a sphere, static mesh component, and then it has material on it. Now if I remember correctly, there might be a way of just doing uh, material. There is. There's a material billboard we can use as well. But what we're going to do is go into here. First thing we want to add is a box collision. Alright. The box collision is going to be what I'll initiates the action of transferring from one portal to another. It's also going to be used when we do on event and overlap um, to set us as no longer traveling. We're going to set the collision as the default just because it things up. So let's do a uh, material billboard for a second. Click on that. I click on one element. Go in here, and this is PP red. We're gonna type in red. Material instance red. And this gives us a nice odd square portal. Not really what we're looking for. could do is if we save that we can go over by the way, if you don't know much about Unreal Editor, or Unreal Engine, is the title of, or the name of your project. So, if we go into Materials, and we go into the Master, what we can also do is type in Sphere Mask. Okay. Plug that into a pass game. Alright. We're going to do a constant three vector, and we're going to do a constant three vector. This is what it's looking like right now. So we're seeing this plane, except for it's always facing us. Okay. So what we want to do is we also want to do constant. Radius of 10. We're going to do A as white. If I remember correctly.
and that's why I ended up, uh... No, I think... That's the three vectors, one. Okay, so that is why I was using the sphere. That explains it. So, BP Red Portal. Pick off this collision build portal. What we're going to do is we're going to add the sphere. And the sphere is a built in blueprint. And all we have to do is it's red. Alright, now we have ourselves a sphere. A box collision. Alright. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make our sphere to be 0.8, should work, tab 0.8 and 0.8. And alright, one of the things that you might be able to do is sphere collision rather than box collision. Just outside, you can see it on the edges. It's just barely outside the edges. I'm gonna compile and save that. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose this sphere collision. We're going to do on event begin overlap. We are going to do an execution and we're going to do a quick print string. Print string is going to be ah, I've been hit. Alright, compile and save that, and then we're going to take Blueprint Red Portal, which is underneath the portal. We're going to put it in the world. We're going to raise it up a little bit. We're going to hit play. We're going to look around until we find the portal. We're going to walk towards the portal, and ah, I've been hit. That tells us that, oh, we have actually hit this component. Now, what you also saw was that we are having collision. Uh, with this object and what I want to do to deal with the collision because in a portal you don't want to just collide and stop uh, You want to be able to continue on and you might run into some issues otherwise later on down the road We're going to go into the sphere We're going to go down here and block all dynamic. We're going to do ignore only pawn for the sphere here uh, Let's rename this to SP underscore collision or sphere collision. We're going to hit save, compile. We're going to go back over here. We are going to hit play. We are going to look to the right because that's where we know it is. And you'll notice we can walk directly through it. Every time we walk through it, we end up getting that ah uh, up in there. Right? So, what we're going to do now is we have the very basic beginnings of being able to transfer from one portal to another. Right now we're going to go back into this blueprint red portal. Alright, we're going to go over to the event graph. We're going to drop this in right here. And we're going to take a look. First thing that I am doing is I am casting to the first person character. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have a boolean is teleporting on the first person character. So let's go into here. All right. We are back in the Rock Ball Remake. This is the one we are currently working on. We're going to let autosave happen. That will give me just enough time to be able to go over here and take a look at my web browser and refresh my viewer list just to see if we get anyone watching. And it looks like we got Little Zippy. Hi, Little Zippy. How are you doing today? Nice to see you in here. 
So what we're going to be doing is, right now we are going into, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. I'm not usually pretty good about talking to people about what I'm doing and if they have any questions. So we're going to go into the first person character. And to be perfectly honest, none of this right now, none of this code, uh, blueprint script is important. What we need to do is we need to create a new variable. We're going to call that is teleporting is going to be the variable. We're going to compile and save. That way we have this set. Our default default value is going to be false. That's why it's not checkbox. Checkbox means true. Is teleporting is false because we are obviously not currently teleporting. So now we're going to go into here where we can delete that print string and we are going to do a cast to player controller and we're going to do other actor as player controller get is Let's compile, close out of there, go back to content, rock ball, portal, EP red portal, Get is teleporting. Oh. That's the first person character. Oops. Sorry. Alright, we are going to check for that. Are we teleporting? Then we hold down B and click, uh, left click, and that will create a branch. And now we are going to check if we are teleporting or not. And here we have delay of 0.5 seconds and is teleporting gets set to false. This was a big thing I had to figure out. This as first person character needs to be the only reference. I at one point had a uh, uh, I had tried casting twice in one blueprint and it did not seem to work. So let's do the true. Delay. Point two. We're going to bring that back up to 0.5, and we're going to go from here, is set is teleporting. Next, we're going to get all actions of the class. And for this, we are going to need the material. But for now, we can do we're not going to do the reference for which class we're getting around. So Get all actors of the class. Here we're going to do a get. Get zero. Get actor location. Get actor rotation and get play on. Get play.
get actor location rotation Set actor location and rotation. Now, some people are going to be like, why are you doing that? Why are you setting the location and rotation rather than just using teleport? Well, I had issues with teleport, and so I became not so much of a fan. So, and we're going to leave it as a teleport. And then get player pawn is going to be what we are targeting. And let's grab all these, bring them down a little bit. We are going to move that up a little, just so it is a little easier seen. Bring that down. Alright. And afterwards, we want to get a reference and that is teleporting to true. Instead of it being BP Red Portal 2, it is going to be BP Blue Portal. Who would have ever thought we would have had something called BP Blue Portal? We're going to save. We're going to hit save all for a quick second, and we're going to go into BP Red Portal, and in here we're going to choose BP Blue Portal. File, save. Alright, now we're going to go into the BP portal. We have everything the same. We're going to set this as BP red portal. Compile and save. Now we're also going to go into the viewport. We are in blue portal now, so this sphere needs to have the different material. Material instance blue. Compile, save. And now we have one red blue print here. We're going to drag and drop a blue print, blue blueprint. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. We're going to put it someplace obvious. We're going to put it right up here. Yep. And hit play. We should be able to go over here. And we had a warning. Infinite loop in blue BP red portal asserted during branch with the following call stack. BP red portal. If it is true, set it to false. Okay, if it is false, go to blueprint red portal, get the stuff, set it to true. Set it to true and then we change the active location. Okay, so let's try moving those around. We're going to alt click, that's going to break it. We're going to move it right here. There's a convenient place to put it. So we're going to put these out. We're going to delete that quickly. We're going to remake our Hold that and we're going to reconnect. Alright, now we should potentially be able to put that down. 
Keep your same velocity. I am slightly appearing in the ground. And if I stay here moving around, I will quickly swap back and forth. Now, what I could do is I could do this. Go here to Sphere Collision, Viewport, was it? Ah, right click on event and overlap. Grab here, copy that. Control V, cast first person character, other actor, put those up. Set is teleporting to true here. Can't I? No, I'm trying to set it to false.
that's zoom out, control Z, 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 Z. Save that there. So now we have the basic ability to travel from point to point. This is really good, right? So what we're going to do, ironically, we're going to go back here to the portal. We're going to select all three of these, and we are going to drag those into a gate. We're going to copy them there, alright? We're going to gate. We're going to F2 that and we're going to call it BP. Underscore blue gate. And this one we are going to F2 and BP underscore red gate. Now we're going to say Save that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create we're going to go into project settings. What we want to do is we want to create two new actions. Go down to input on the left hand side. And we want to create two action mappings. Okay. Two action mappings. Action. What I ended up doing to do those was I clicked plus plus. New action is going to. Actually, we only need to create one. First one is going to be called Red Portal Fire. And this one is going to be called. You'll never guess it. It's going to be called Blue Portal Fire. No one ever would have guessed. I, I understand. Now, Blue Portal Fire is going to be fired with the mouse, right mouse button, and Red Portal Fire is the left mouse button. Fair enough. Jump is the space bar, reset the R. Reset the air stuff. Now that sun just goes out of the window. You don't have to go look around for a save button or anything. What we're going to do next is we're going to go back into that player controller that we added the variable to. It's under first person BP and blueprints. Go into the first person character. Alright. In here we currently have our movement input. Head motion display, a motion controller stick input. We have our mouse input. That's up and down, left and right. And we have spawn projectiles. This is a relatively easy thing for us to do. What we're going to do is... Everything... Oh, we're getting rid of this. This, 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 this. Actually getting rid of all of this. Including all this. I remember correctly. Could be wrong. Well, let's look to find out. Like a ball.
Okay. I set these under Unreal Assets in this one, so Unreal Assets PP. Yeah, I thought so. So in here, first we're getting the player camera manager. We're getting the actor location and the forward vector. We are multiplying the forward vector by 5,000. We are adding that to the actor location and we're setting that at the end. The actor location at the start. Trace channel is visibility and the out hit is what's giving us our spawn actor. The spawn rotation get is from actor location to look at rotation and the location is from the impact normal or impact point. So there, camera. That's who is one to go and have to remember, huh? Get player ah. player camera manager. It's actor forward vector. Line trace by channel. And remember we are going to multiply that. Good. We're sending that to 4,000. Good trace complex. Hit results. Break. And then we are going to remember correctly it's spawn actor at location. Spawn actor. Spawn actor from class. Alright, and we're going to split structure the location. The impact point. Find look at rotation. Get actor location and find look at rotation. Get location. Alright, now we're going to go and do get look look at rotation. Should give us that. So now when we left click, on blue portal fire, well, doing blue portal. So we want to spawn a blueprint blue portal. Ah. Save. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to copy this entire thing. Control C, Control V. Literally the entire thing. Except here, we're going to delete that. Right. Input red portal fire on crust and then 
PvP Red Portal. Compile, save. Now we're going to take that and that out of here. And hit play. Now, what we should be able to do is fire. Yes, I took the sound out. And wow, that's a bit off. And let's look at that. And we got some other stuff we gotta do too, apparently. Hey, I should all be getting off. Alright, second. Alright, I was starting out by getting all actors of class and destroying actors. Got it. That's red portal. I'm going to do a do red portal. Oh well, no, we're gonna copy that. We're gonna move these to the left. Obviously not that much to the left, but Instead of it being blue print right, we want it to be blue print blue portal. File, save. And now, go ahead and hit play. It should be blue. Get a blue, 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 blue. Red. Something going on with that. So we'll go back over here. Let's escape out of that. Target is impact point. Get after the location to start.
encontrar. Mm. Really be that simple. Uh, okay, here. Very odd.
guess if I wanted to be more accurate, what I could do... ...is grab the sphere. It looks like that one's going to be a bit of a uh, ultimate logo dessert to make your profile. I think that is going to be something that I'm going to need to uh, work on in a little bit. Um, for the most part, it is. I have a feeling it has to do with where or how I'm building the slime trace. But. something up to uh, work off the crosshair. Rather than part of the gun, 
have a do it off the cross here. That sounds like what we'll do. Let's see, today's Friday, tomorrow's Saturday. We'll work more on this tomorrow. Let's go find someone fun to watch over on the witches. And we will give them a raid. You all snow please. sends back a link and so maybe I'll need to uh we'll give her take over that on YouTube. But everybody you have a great day. Uh thank you for joining in with me Bakish. I'll be coming back again YouTube sends back tomorrow. So maybe I'll need to uh at night, maybe sometime today. I don't have a set schedule anymore, but uh, tomorrow what we're going to be doing is we're going to see if we can fix this issue where wire I'm pointing is not always where it lines up to see how that's not we're going to see if we can fix this issue where we're going to go and fix that where I'm pointing uh, where we're likely going to do it is by utilizing my crosshair as the reward job and getting the fourth vector from that. But we will be doing that testing tomorrow and then we're going to start doing the polishing to uh, this uh, two grades and gates and then we'll start on actual game day scoring mechanics. Probably Sunday or well. Uh, I won't be streaming Sunday. I got the start, so and I start that Sunday morning. Dog early in the morning. I need to be to be ready for work, so uh, I will not be streaming Sunday at least not early in the morning. I will be streaming Sunday. Later on in the evening, but it is no guarantees. And I will be getting my new schedule with work now. So I will not be streaming. Uh, I will have a wonderful night. And I will see you later on in the evening. But, 